In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at NURBS curves. We're going to take a look at why it is under some situations a NURBS curve is better than a Bezier curve, especially if you're bringing in a bitmap into the background that you're going to trace over and you want to then convert that into a subdivision surface object. So you can see by looking at this that there are relatively few points and the curve itself is really smooth. Whereas it can take a little bit of extra work with the Bezier curve to do that. So I'm going to tab out of here and we're going to do a shift. In fact, let me just come over here and turn this off. Shift A and under curves, we're going to add a point. You need to enable the extra curve objects add on, which is built into Blender in the preferences in order to see these. So point, and we're going to note that by default, we're in Bezier mode. 2D, and that's okay. We're going to switch this over to NURBS, and there's something else that I want to bring your attention to here is that it says order U of 4. That's a very important piece of information because there's actually a bug that's going to make this curve not show up correctly. But So leave this order U of 4 in the back of your mind, press the E key to extrude new segments, and we can begin pulling out new segments. And you're going to note that we're not seeing any curvature come down to the object data properties for the curve and down in active spline you're going to note that it says order u of two it should be four and there we see the curve just remember when you start off with the point that's what's going to happen okay you got to remember to change that back to four as i press the e key and pull new segments out it will begin adjusting backwards the curve a little bit which you can see happening whereas bezier curves don't tend to do that Okay, so editing these is really quite easy. I'm in tweak mode and in the move tool, and I can just click, hold, and drag to change the points. And you can see how easy it is to manipulate. Now we can cyclic it, and I'm going to turn off end point so we don't have a hard corner point there. In fact, let me turn off fill for right now. So as soon as you turn off turn cyclic on, it'll close it. So it becomes closed. You don't want to do endpoint. Endpoint will cause a kink at the starting point. But in general, NURBS curves don't like to have corner points. This is an advantage of Bezier curves. Bezier curves will have corner points quite easily. Okay, but let's think about this for a minute. NURBS curves have the points lying outside of the actual curve whereas Bezier curves have the point lying on the curve, and that's going to have an important impact on generating subdivision surfaces from these types of curves. So let's do this. Let's come over. I'm going to tab key, and I'm going to X, and I'm going to delete that. We're going to come back to this as a starting point, and there we can see these. I'm going to press Shift and D, and then the X key to duplicate that, and we want to take a look at what happens if we convert this now into a polygon mesh for use with the subdivision surface modifier? Go into edit mode, and the first thing that I'm going to do is select all the points by pressing the A key, bring up the context menu, and we're going to come down to set spline type to poly. Poly means a polyline. It's more of a polygon mesh data type, and it just means it's these what we call naked edges. There's no fill on either side of the edge. But these can be very useful for construction purposes. Tab to leave edit mode, bring up the context menu, and we're going to convert this directly into a polygon mesh. So nothing changes, but now we can do something interesting. We can come down to our modifier list, and we can add a subdivision surface modifier to that. I'll change these to three, and then look at that. That matches exactly to the original form of the NURBS curve. So you can see there's a relationship between NURBS curves and subdivision surface objects in terms of the underlying Catmull-Clark subdivision algorithm. This is awesome because we have the exact same points that we were using. Well, let's take a look at the impact of using a Bezier curve to do the same operation that we just did, where we convert a curve over into a polygon mesh that then drives a subdivision surface object. I'm going to delete that. We don't need that anymore. And let's look at Bezier curve version of this. So I traced it, so it's about pretty much the same. 
you can see that it's got quite a few more points to define the same curvature. That's not a big deal, but what is a big deal is the fact that the points of the Bezier curve lie on the curve itself, and that is a problem because a polygon mesh that is derived from that has its vertex point lining up to these positions and onto the curve itself. Let's come over and go to the data object properties for the curve, and we need to reduce the resolution of the curve that we're going to turn into a polygon mesh that's then going to drive a subdivision surface. We don't need that many points. In fact, we don't want too many points. So we're going to just reduce this all the way down to two. You can see the tessellation there quite easily. Tab key, bring up the context menu, and we're going to convert this into a polygon mesh specifically. Now we can add a subdivision modifier to it, and I'll increase the resolution to 3. And it defines that shape quite nicely, but there's a problem. If our goal was to match up to a template that we were tracing, using this method we would no longer have a match. And let's use our original NURBS curve as an example. And you can see that it doesn't match to the original NURBS curve. And when we look at it all the way around on the shallow areas, it's not too bad, but it is divergent. And especially when we look at the top, you can see it's, it's quite a bit different. And that is because if I press the tab key, the points lie on the original curve. And subdivision, the way that curvature works, is it comes up and almost touches the center of the edge between two points, and so we get an insetting. And this is what we avoid when we use a NURBS curve as a way of tracing the path in the first place, because the NURBS curve has the points lying outside of the curve. So this is one of the reasons why you would necessarily want to choose a NURBS curve for, say, tracing a path, as opposed to a Bezier curve, if your end goal is to use that for subdivision surfaces and you're trying to match up to, say, a template that you're tracing.